This is your Barbados Today evening update for Thursday, October 26, 2017. I'm Ryan Jiltz. Glad you could join us. Quick action by residents of Haynesville, St. James, averted what could have been a disaster when fire broke out at a National Housing Corporation unit today. The three-bedroom home of Ryan Odell was damaged, but Odell, who lives with his mother, Judy Carrington, and his seven-year-old daughter, says it could have been much worse. In other news, social commentator and activist Adrian Green has chided members of parliament and senior government officials for not publicly condemning corruption in Barbados. Addressing a public discussion hosted by the Barbados Integrity Group on the topic corruption, costs, consequence and remedies at the St. Gabriel School, he said many of them are part of the system simply by their silence. Green was also critical of the MPs for failing to proclaim the Prevention of Corruption Act, which was passed in Parliament since 2012. If our governments, our governments were really, really serious and respectful of their people, even if the levels of corruption that are rumored to be out there are not true, they would be obligated to come out and take some serious measures, serious measures to demonstrate, not to tell, but to demonstrate that we are serious about eliminating corruption in the country. But again, we have legislation sitting down and waiting for somebody to act on them. So if you are a part of the system, if you have been a member of parliament or in any way involved in governments at those levels, and you ain't coming out calling names and taking scalps. A lot of people didn't want to hear you because the perception is you were there. You were in the belly of the beast. If you were not in it, you know what's going on. You are guilty by association. Unless you're talking and coming out, you know what they say, come out things? Unless you're bringing out things, people don't really want to hear you. One of the major financial supporters of Barbados and CARICOM is not at all pleased with the slow progress of the implementation of the Economic Partnership Agreement and the CARICOM single market and economy. In fact, in a stern warning this morning, the European Union's ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Daniela Tremacheri, told local and regional officials at a CSME and EPA closing out workshop to stop talking and get acting. Over the past decade, the EU has invested 37 million euros in support for the CSME and another 46.5 million euro to support EPA implementation under the 9th and 10th European Development Fund. And with additional funding set to be released under the 11th EDF, Tremateri said the EU wants to see more results. We can't afford not to see results. And this and, uh, and this not because, you know, we put money and we want something back, not because we believe in what we have been doing, but, of course, like you, we sometimes can get frustrated about the lack of results. So I'm sure that today there will be an opportunity for us to see that it is not all being wasted. On the contrary, that a lot has been done so that we now can refocus and continue our support uh, through the 11 EDF that this is uh, uh, an investment for which we have uh, value for money, that we have to justify not only to our taxpayers in Europe, because of course this is our all grants funded through the contribution of the European citizen to the EDF, through the government of course, but this is something you know, that is trickling down and it is value for money also for the Caribbean citizens. In sporting news, the Barbados Olympic Association has elected its first female president. Attorney at law Sandra Osborne QC was the hands-down winner when the biennial elections took place at the annual general meeting last night at the Lloyd Erskine Sandyford Centre. We hear more from our Admar Goodrich Boyce. It was arguably the most anticipated general meeting of the Barbados Olympic Association. At the center, the election of a new president to fill the shoes of Steve Stout, who has been at the helm of the Barbados Olympic Association since 1996, having secured five successive turns. The 
candidate Sandra Osborne, Noah Lynch, and Lieutenant Colonel Trevor Brown. The battle was bitter. The Athletics Association of Barbados feared that some candidates had an unfair advantage. As a result, the association suspended the voting rights of the board of directors, and this didn't sit well with some of the candidates. It all came to an end last night. Around 7.45, news broke that Sandra Osborne was elected the first female president of the BOA. Osborne gained 24 of the 36 votes up for grabs, defeating Lieutenant Colonel Trevor Brown, who received 10 votes, and Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Cricket Association, Noah Lynch, who secured two. In other results, Ralph Johnson was re-elected as Vice President, amassing 14 votes, Erskine Simmons also retains the position of General Secretary with 24 votes, while 25 votes were enough to see Arson Simpson elected as Treasurer. Cameron Burt remains the Assistant General Secretary of the BOA. And Margaret Ridge Boyce, Barbados Today. There's regional and international news after this short break. Join us from November 16th to 19th, 2017 for the Barbados Food and Rum Festival, where acclaimed Barbadian chefs and mixologists are joined by Chef Jean-Georges of the U.S., Chef Tom Akins of the U.K., Chef Chris De La Rosa of Canada to create dining experiences to delight the senses. Visit TicketPal.com and all TicketPal locations to get your tickets. And visit FoodandRum.com for more information. The just-concluded CARICOM Mexico Summit, which ended in Belize yesterday, has been hailed as a success by CARICOM Chairman Dr. Keith Mitchell. Mitchell, who is also the Prime Minister of Grenada, told journalists that Mexico has been a valuable CARICOM partner and the one-day summit was vital in strengthening their relationship. Our discussions today, for obvious reasons, had some focus on disaster management and recovery. Both CARICOM and Mexico have been hit hard in recent times by hurricanes on one hand in the Caribbean and earthquakes in Mexico. The president announced Mexico's financial contribution to strengthen the Caribbean catastrophic risk insurance facility, despite the fact that he had his own problems in his own country. We agreed to collaborate to ensure the success of the upcoming International Donor <coughs> Conference convened by CARICOM and the UN to take place on the 21st of November 2017 at the United Nations in New York. And on the international front, backers and opponents of independence in Catalonia have clashed in Parliament over the way forward as the Spanish government is set to reassert control. The debate came a day before Spain's Senate is expected to approve a plan to curtail some of the region's autonomous powers following a referendum earlier this month. These include removing the leader, Carles Prugdemont, and curtailing the Parliament's power. And that's where we end this edition of news. But for the very latest, you can check out our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and you can like us on Facebook. Don't forget, we're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals and on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune in to Mix 96.9 FM for more. I'm Ryan Jilts. Have a good evening.